very good morning from the capital of North Macedonia. The marathon finish point is behind me as is the main square and all of these incredible buildings and architecture. I'm walking across an old bridge, I've got lots to show you. I'm gonna be here in the capital for two days and then we're gonna rent a car and head out into the mountains, see what we can find, but it is gonna be a great trip, I can just feel it. So without any further ado, let's take a look around, let's take a bit of a tour. Welcome to Skopje. So at 10 o'clock this morning, I joined a free walking tour here in the city. We were led around by a guy named Zoran, who was an excellent tour guide. He showed us a lot of the key sites, including the old bazaar, some of the bridges and the main square. He talked a lot about the history and culture and what it's actually like to live here in Skopje. So what I'm gonna do now is walk around again, revisit some of those key sites, and this time, bring you with me. As we do that though, I thought we would talk a little bit about the history of this region because it is intense. There is evidence of people living here going back 7,000 years ago. It was part of ancient Pallonia and Dardinia. And then of course we have the ancient kingdom of Macedon. And I'll be talking a lot more about that tomorrow in the next video when we discuss Alexander the Great and King Philip II. It is certainly a city famous for its statues. There must be thousands of them. Up here on this very elaborate and large pedestal is King Philip II of Macedon. When the Macedonian Empire fell, the Romans came in, took control. After that, it was the Byzantine Empire. After that, it was the Bulgarians. After that, it was the Serbians. You can see where I'm going with this, a long history of other people ruling this land. And then in 1392, the Ottoman Empire conquered this part of Europe and they ended up ruling here for about 500 years. During that long period of time, they left behind a lot of buildings and architecture, all built in the Ottoman style, including this hammam. It is an ancient Turkish bathhouse built from brick and stone. It has these elaborate domes on the roof and these days it serves the city as an art gallery. They also built the second largest old bazaar in the whole of Europe. Unfortunately, it's Sunday today, so a lot of the shops are closed, but I'm gonna come back here in tomorrow's video, explore it a bit more, and hopefully pick up a few bargains. Also responsible for building the old stone bridge that you can see behind me. It spans the river Vardar that cuts the city in two and it will take you from the Grand Bazaar on the north bank to Macedonia Square on the south. The bridge is 214 meters from one end to the other. It's six meters wide and it has 12 arches that make it so strong that it was able to withstand the destruction of an earthquake that happened here in the 1960s, but more on that in a couple of seconds. There were clearly a lot of magnificent buildings and structures built during Ottoman rule, but in 1913, the Ottoman Empire collapsed and the area known as Historic Macedonia became part of Serbia, Greece and Bulgaria. The area now known as North Macedonia became part of Serbia. That led to the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes and then later on that became Yugoslavia. Now it may look like that's a piece of history in the making, a classical pirate ship, but if you notice it's much, much higher than all the bridges. And it turns out that it is actually a fixed object made of steel and all the modern building technologies. And it is set just to look like a historic ship.
26th of July 1963, the area and specifically the city of Skopje suffered a catastrophic earthquake. 6.1 on the Richter scale, it killed over a thousand people and left over a hundred thousand people homeless. Behind me you can see the clock of the old train station. The building these days is an art gallery, but the clock has been left exactly as it was, stamped on 5.17 a.m., which is the exact time that the earthquake hit. The earthquake destroyed over 70% of the city, which is why some of the buildings now immediately outside the city center have a very communist blocky look. And that's because when you've got tens of thousands of people homeless, but to quickly erect inexpensive functioning buildings that people can live in straight away. One example of a building being destroyed is the one right here on this spot. It was originally a cathedral where Mother Teresa was baptized. Mother Teresa was born in Skopje and they have rebuilt a memorial house on the site of that former cathedral where you can go inside and learn about Mother Teresa. Just across the other side of the river there is the fortress high up on the hill. I'll be visiting that in the next video so keep your eye out for that one. Right now I wanted to give you a couple of examples of Yugoslav architecture also known as brutalist architecture the signature of which is the concrete blocky feel fascinating to see i love seeing this kind of stuff when i visit former socialist or communist countries you can see up there it looks like it's abandoned because the glass is shattered and broken the people here voted overwhelmingly in a referendum to leave Yugoslavia and to become a free independent country. They were one of the very few if, if not the only country to leave Yugoslavia without a war and without bloodshed. They went on to change their name to the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia and then once again they changed it later on to the Republic of Macedonia and then for political reasons they changed it to the Republic of North Macedonia in 2019. I'll talk a little bit more about the politics behind that decision in tomorrow's video. It's an interesting one. Behind me now though and the shots that you've been seeing on the video are of the Macedonian Parliament. The country is now I'm glad to say a free and open democracy. In 2014 the city began a $700 million project to bolster tourism and improve the look of the city centre. The Macedonia gate behind me is part of it. Darkness has fallen and I am on Macedonia Square now. This is the central plaza. In the centre you will see a very large extravagant statue of Alexander the Great. A hero round these parts, don't you know? Across the far side there is a massive LED display screen. It's kind of reminiscent of Piccadilly Circus in London if you've been there. And whilst the square looks like it's surrounded by old historic buildings, they're actually very recent additions, made mostly of brick and layered out with a white marble effect. Most of the original buildings were sadly destroyed in that horrific earthquake in the 1960s. Right, one more stop left, and for that we're going to have to head down towards the river. Down here, in addition to the old bridge, there's three more bridges that I want to show you. The first is the Freedom Bridge. This one is dedicated to all those who were beaten, killed or tortured in the pursuit of Macedonian freedom over the centuries. On it, you'll find symbols and carvings. The second and third ones I really thought were going to be lit up like Christmas trees tonight. There are over a hundred lamps on both of them and none of them unfortunately are switched on so it's a little bit dark but the second one here is called the Bridge of Art and it's dedicated to all of the artists and poets and composers and writers who have contributed to Macedonian culture. 
over the years. The third and final bridge is called the Bridge of Civilizations. It is once again lined with lamps that are not working and statues dedicated to the people who have contributed to the civilization of Macedonia and the rest of the world. I think it's also the only bridge I've ever seen that has a working fountain right in the middle of it. I am back down by the waterside. Hopefully you've enjoyed my tour around Skopje before we call it a day. I wanted to give you a few bits of information. I probably should have talked about this earlier in the video, but there wasn't really a time or a slot I could fit it in. First of all, the population here in Skopje is about 420,000 people. Add another 100,000 to that if you include the 10 municipality areas on the outskirts of the city. The population of the country, North Macedonia, is about 1.8 million. The currency here is the Macedonian dinar, although euros are widely accepted. And the language is Macedonian, although Albanian is an official second language. In terms of the economy, the leading industry here in Skopje is construction, but the country as a whole, it is agriculture. Thanks very much for watching the video. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be walking through the old bazaar, looking at that in a bit more detail, heading up to the fortress, and also talking about the N-word. For more information, check out my video tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Good night from Skopje.